Hello everyone and welcome. And today we're going to be getting started with something called as petronets. So what are petronets anyway? This is the first question that rises into your mind. Now petronets are basically a type of graphical programming language. Well, I'm going to write graphical language here. That's going to make the job easier. So basically you're going to be dealing with graphs and stuff all out there, right? And it's a bipartite graphs, which means there are two sets of elements. We're going to come to know about that later. Any petronet, normally, any petronet should look like this, you know. Uh, the graph should be something close to this. Now, in this graph, if you used to mark it and understand, then these circles are called something as places. Then these lines, straight lines, are called transitions. And then these arrows are called as arcs of the petronets. And then these tokens or these black dots are called as the tokens of a petronet. So basically these are the different elements of a petronet. Now we're going to get started up with a place. So what is a place of a petronet? It is denoted by a circle. A place is basically a condition. It can be pre or post condition depending upon its location in the graph. And then secondly, a place is also used for storing data or values, right? It is used in storing data and it is stored, used in storing some values. It can be any sort of values. We're going to come to know what kind of values, how do you represent that? So basically, now we come to transitions. So transitions can be represented by a line, a box, or a rectangle. We're going to lose, use the line here because that's a lot more easier to do. So lines represent an event slash a process, right? So any event, any process, that can be represented by transition. Then we come to these arcs and these arcs basically direct the graph, right? They direct the graph to a certain direction and that's what their job is to properly direct the graph. So the last thing to know is that we have these places, these transitions and these arcs to form a graph. But what can we do? We cannot do anything because we don't have anything dynamic. So we're going to use something called as tokens, right? To add something dynamic in the graph. So what are tokens? Tokens are values that can circulate through the graph. Now we come to a very, very important process and that is firing. So let's come to know about firing. Firing is a very important process in petronets. So basically, if you draw a petronet like this, the simple one, sequential one, then the node, this transition, then in this transition, the specific one that is arrowed, the place that gives the data is known as input. The place that is being, that is taking the data or that is being given the data is the output node for that specific transition. A place may be input node for one transition and output node for another transition. Now in firing, basically, if you have a petronet like this, then in firing, what happens is that it takes one token from its input places and gives it to its output places. So basically if a pattern it looks like this before firing, then after firing, what will happen is that it will take the token from the input place and then it will give the token back to the output place, right? So we'll place one token in its output place of the transition. So it, the process of firing occurs with a transition and a transition fires whenever there is a token in all its input places, right? A transition fires whenever there is a token in all its input places. So it also works for multiple inputs. If there are multiple inputs like this for a transition and all of them have one, one token, then after firing, after firing, only, only one token will be placed in its output place, not three, because the tokens are being taken by the transition as input and then being given to the output place as an output, right? 
it's not the same token so whenever there are at least one token in all the input places of a patronet of a transition excuse me then in that case the transition can fire that is, in that case the transition can fire right so basically the input place of a transition should have one token in it so that the transition can fire now we come to the mathematical representation of a patronet that is done with we usually say patronets is equal to p and delta equals to delta equals is there because we consider some other changes too we're going to come to know about that later so p n delta equals p slash t slash comma i comma o comma m t zero right so it's p t i o m t zero that's what represents the patronets where p is the set of places the same places that we did right now and t the t is the set of transitions in a patronet so basically uh all the transitions if you make a set of it right that is why patronet is bipartite too because there are p and t two sets of elements in the graph not arcs and tokens they are not considered so basically p looks something like this if you use p1 p2 and like that p1 p2 p3 dot dot pn for a given patronet and t should look like this we usually use t for naming of transitions t1 t2 dot dot t3 dot dot tn right it should look like that so basically now we come to the other parts that is the i and the o so i is the input matrix right it's the input matrix uh sorry it's let me just remove that right there yes it's the input matrix it's a boolean matrix and it basically tells which place is an input for which transition it corresponds the places input places to that specific transition right it corresponds the input places to their transitions right so you can say the transitions are represented on these rows and the places are represented for these columns basically so considering that p2 is the input place for t2 then we'll mark p2 as 1 and the rest of them as 0 right similarly you have the output matrix and that is marked by o so in same way you just represent all the transitions in the rows and the places in the columns right so after you uh, consider let's consider that p2 is an output place for t1 in that case p2 will be marked with 1 and rest of them will be marked with a 0 basically that's how you make a output matrix and mt0 is basically the marking of the patronet which tells the number of tokens that are present in a place at that instance of time so let's see in the brief example here with patronets right so one thing is we have to see here is let's draw a sequential action patronet right a simple one let's draw it and this this has three places and two transitions in it and let's consider there is one token only in the graph so the mt0 that is the marking at the starting of the graph is going to be 1 comma 0 comma 0 because there is one token in the first place and the rest of the places don't have any tokens in them let's mark them p1 p2 p3 and t1 and t2 for the transitions right so now if you make a set of p then you'll find it to be like p1 p2 and p3 right and if you make a set of t similarly then it will be small one it will be t1 and t2 only now let's come to the input matrix the input matrix for this one is going to be quite simple it's going to be 1 comma 0 1 0 0 for the first row and similarly it's going to proceed let's just draw it right if you make a inverse is going to be 100 0 then it's going to be 0 1 0 0 1 0 for the second row and 0 0 1 for the third row similarly if you draw the output matrix 
that is going to be 0 1 0 right it can be 0 1 0 0 0 1 and 1 0 0 basically it corresponds to the input place output places with the transitions right so that is why we made it like that so there are a lot more to know in petrinets also petrinets is a big field like there are time petrinets to know there are stochastic petrinets and then there are also you know reachability graphs which you can use as Markov chains in many cases if you are in stochastic petrinet we'll come to that later you know uh, that's actually pretty deep right because then you'll also have to know about continuous time Markov chains uh, to know that properly and the uses of petrinets is almost you know everywhere it will make you a better programmer because it will help you to understand logic better it will help you to you know frame out the logic better it will help you to understand deadlocks in a system and do a lot of more stuff right understands the compatibility of the system and different things it is used in embedded systems too it is used in industries it's used in factory pipelines and you know you look around yourself and you'll you're gonna find a lot of uses of petrinets because it's mainly used to model some sort of concurrency right so that is why it is used a lot so you know there's a lot of uses of petrinets and if you just have to revise it so petrinets looks something like this no consecutive places together a place a transition and then a place right it is not possible to have a place and a place or a transition and transition together so we put a token in this basically and after firing the token goes from the input place to the output place and there needs to be at least one token right so i think that's it